Okay, hello friends. Um, how have you been uh, since we last met? I'm sure you guys are doing great and uh, you have been able to read through your notes, uh, the notes we took uh, last time. And I'm sure you cannot forget a good friend. Um, once again, my name is Prince Henry and uh, I teach English here. I'm still sitting in for teacher Christine, who is not yet doing well. Um, last time, we introduced our topic, electronic media, and we talked about it in the details. Then uh, our subtopic still, uh, radios and TVs, we are still continuing with the same. And uh, under that, we looked at conditional clo uh, clauses. However, last time we looked at uh, if clauses as conditional clo uh, clauses. Though today, we are still doing the same topic, the same subtopic, and uh, the same aspect of grammar, we are going to move to another type of conditional sentences. But before we go to that, we are going to look at the work we did last time. Now, let us take a look at what we had uh, in the previous lesson. Remember, we were talking about if clauses as uh, a type of conditional sentences. We talked about if one, if two, and if three. Remember, we said that if is a conjunction. And if it is a conjunction, we said it is a joining word. If it is a joining word, what does it do? We said it joins a condition to a result. Okay? We said uh, there must be a condition to be, uh, to be fulfilled in order for a certain result to happen. Okay. We talked about if one, uh, where we find the chances of fulfilling that condition are available and therefore the result can happen. And then when we went to if two, we said the chances of fulfilling this condition are not there and therefore the result will never happen. And then when we talked about if three, we said the chances of fulfilling this condition were there, but now over. And since they are over, the result cannot happen. Let us take a look at these examples. Let us look at the first one. He will buy a flat TV when he has enough money in his account. This sentence here um, has a condition and has a result. The, co the, the result is he will buy a flat TV. But when will he buy a flat TV? That is only when he has enough money in his account. To take you back, when we looked at if one, we said that when can be used in the place of if. That is in if one. So when you look at this sentence, there is no difference almost between this sentence and the if one sentence. Simply because when can be used in the place of if in if one. And we said that when if is in the middle, we begin with the result and end with the condition because the result goes with the main clause and the, the condition I mean, goes with the if clause. Now, we use it when here. What happens when we use if itself? Let us look at this. If we use if in this sentence, if he has enough money in his account, he will buy a flat TV. From the word if up to where this comma is here, this is what we called the if clause last time. Yeah? And we called it the conditional clause, the if clause, where the condition is. And then from the comma, we said that is the result clause, all the main clause. Because we see a present tense in the if clause and the future simple present in the main clause, then we say this sentence is in if one. Because the chances of fulfilling this condition are there, therefore this result can happen. Let us look at what happens when we change tenses in this same sentence. Okay. If he had enough money in his account, he would buy a flat TV. We have simply changed has to had, that is its past tense. Yeah? And then we have uh, used the future simple but past I don't want to say that we have changed the will to its past. No. Because when we looked at if one last time, we said that 
in the main clause in if one, we use the future simple present. And the future simple present is where we use will or shall plus the first form of the verb. But we said that in if two, we use the past simple uh, the past simple in the if clause and the future simple but past in the main clause. Future simple but past, that is why we said we use the world plus the first form of the main verb. And this is what we called if two. Let's take a look at the if three we looked at last time. We said we use only the perfect tenses in if three, whereby we said uh, we use the Past perfect in the if clause and future perfect past in the main clause. Past perfect is what we use hard plus the third form of the verb or what we call the past participle form of the verb. Now, if he had had enough money in his account, he would have bought a flat TV. One had is the helping verb in the past perfect, and this other hard is the hard that uh, we have made from the main verb we had, has. So this is the third form, the past participle form of the verb. So had, had. This is the helping verb, this is the third form of the main verb that we had. And then when we go to the main clause, we see would have both. Would have uh, both. This is the third form. So this is what we call the future perfect but past. Because future perfect present, we would say will have both. But this is future perfect past, so we say would have both. Remember we said that in if three, we can use had in the place of if. Now, in the place of if, we use had, the helping verb. We do kind of inversion, changing the order of the sentence. Her, I mean, a verb before the subject. Now, our subject is he. So what do we do? We invert the sentence. We change its order. We say verb, then subject. Yeah? Had he had enough money in his account, he would have bought a flat TV. So this is also if theory. This is if theory where we have used if, and this is if theory because we have used had in the place of if. So this is what we looked at last time. And I'm sure now this one also gives you a more understanding about what we talked about last time. Today, I told you we are continuing with the conditionals. Uh, uh, we are continuing with the conditionals, but still we have not changed our ways of working. Safety first. We have to be safe. We have to be responsible. We have to be uh, engaged. We have to participate. We have to be active, not just to sit and watch. Okay? And also, please be respectful. We have not changed our ways of work. Um, and today we are going to look at something very small, though in a broader way. We have only one learning intention today. And this is understanding the use of unless in conditionals, comprehensively. I mean, understanding it in totality, not just a matter of understanding, okay? Let us go. What is unless? is easy to understand. It simply means if dash not. When you see this dash here, it means there are words. So if with other words, not, and again with other words. And when we see the word not in the meaning of unless, it means this word is a negative. I know you know what a negative word is. A word in English that simply has an idea of not. As I told you, we shall look at it 
uh, in just a, a, a summarized way, there are four ways of using unless. Four ways. And this is how we can summarize it. One, we already know an if clause, and we already know the main clause. Now, when we go to the if clause and we find a word not, only in the if clause, when there is a word not in the if clause, but not in the main clause, so we have to understand this. We have two parts of a conditional sentence. The if clause, that is the conditional clause, and the result clause, what we are calling the main clause. But we want to look at both clauses at the same time. If we look at the if clause, let us look at it. If our teacher does not come early, this is our if clause. And we are saying, if we find the word not in the if clause, but not in the main clause, let us look at the main clause. Children will break the window panes. Children will break the window panes. This is our main clause. And in the main clause, we don't see any word like not there. So when we are using unless, and we find not in the if clause, but not in the main clause. What do we do? We simply replace if with unless and remove the not that is in the if clause. Why are we removing it anyway? Remember we said unless means if does not. So if we are replacing if with unless, we shall also remove that not that is in the if clause. Because it is already here in the word unless. Let us look at it when we make that replacement. Unless our teacher comes early, children will break the window panes. What have we done? We have used unless in the place of if and also removed the not that was in the if clause because unless means if dash not. So, if and not are all in here. But remember, to remove that not from the if clause, we have to be sure that there is no not in the main clause. Let us look at the second way of using unless. Aha, uh -huh, here it is. Now remember we said the if in the first sentence, I mean, the note in the first sentence was in the if clause. But now, here, not is in the main clause. That's why we are saying that when the negative not is in the main clause, in the first example, not was in the if clause. But now, not is in the main clause. What shall we do? Simply do like we did. Replace if with unless. And also eliminate, simply remove that negative that is in the main clause. Remember in the first example, we removed the note that was in the if clause and replaced if with unless. Because the negative was in the if clause. Now, the same thing we are going to do here. We shall replace if with unless and also remove the negative that is in the mind close. Let us look at this example. If he gets the pass mark, he will not repeat the class. Our if clause is affirmative, completely positive. If he gets the pass mark, positive. We don't see any negative in it. He will not repeat the class. This is the main clause. And you see, our negative note is already there. But remember what we said that you replace if with unless and eliminate the negative that is in the main clause. So this is what we shall come up with. 
unless he gets the pass mark, he will repeat the class. Unless he gets the pass mark, he will repeat the class. Simple. Just understand this. Then we go to the third way of using unless. Here it is. Wow. Now, we looked at when there is a not in the if clause and when there is a not in the main clause. Yeah? But now, let us look at this. When they are negatives in both clauses. Aha. Uh -huh. In the first example, we had one not in the if clause. In the second example, we had one not in the main clause. But what happens when we find negatives in both clauses? Let us see. When they are negatives in both clauses, that is to say, not in the if clause and another not in the main clause, what do we do? Simply replace if with unless and eliminate one, the not that is in the if clause. Understood? When we find a negative in the if clause and a negative in the main clause, a negative in the if clause, if you do not write well, a negative in the if clause, you see that? And a negative in the main clause, you see this? We have two negatives in both clauses. That is one negative in the if clause and another negative in the main clause. It is as we said, simply go to if and replace it with unless and remove one not. Remove one not. That is in the if clause. Unless means if dash not. If, if you do not write well, the teacher will not mark your work. Okay. We said replace if with unless, which is done. Unless you write well, we said remove one negative that is in the, main, in the if clause, the teacher will not write your work. I mean, the teacher will not mark your work. That is the third way of using unless. Let me take you back. The first one, the not was in the if clause. The second one, not was in the main clause. Now the third, we find a not in the if clause and a not in the main clause. Let's see what the fourth one gives us. Uh-huh. When there isn't any negative in the two clauses, now, here all our clauses are in affirmative form. We don't have any negative. When there isn't any negative in the two clauses, what we do is to replace unless, I mean to replace if with unless, yeah, to replace if with unless, and create one negative in the main clause. Why do we have to create a negative in the main clause? You have this in mathematics. Yeah? It is there in mathematics. You say that a negative multiplied by another negative, what you get is a positive. That is mathematics. That a negative multiplied by another negative, what you get is a positive. So, let us see. Here we have our positive conditional sentence and positive result. If Alan practices every day, he will play on the first team. If Alan practices every day, is positive. He will play on the first team, is positive. But because we want to use unless in the place of if, we say, unless Alan practices every day, we said you create one negative in the main clause. He will not play on the first team. 
Say that because we say a negative multiplied by another negative, we get a positive. Now, if unless is a negative, we multiply it uh, by this negative note, the result we shall get is our positive sentence we started with. Say that. It is just as simple as that. Those are the four simple ways of understanding unless. Remember, unless can be used in the three if clauses. In if one, in if two, and in if three. Okay? Now, this is just a simple exercise. A simple exercise. Only five numbers. Using unless. Remember, just like if, unless can be used at the beginning and can also be used in the middle. That's why you say, number one says, if Katakuli does not pass in division one, he will not join the high school. Begin unless. In other words, rewrite this sentence, beginning unless. There is a negative in the if clause, there is a negative in the mind clause. You know what to do. Let us look at number three. Oh, let us look at number two, this one. Oh, this 10, I don't know. If a call doesn't take her teacher's advice, he will file the trial test. If a call does not take her teacher's advice, he will file the trial test. See. We have a negative in the if clause, but we don't have a negative note in the mind clause. You already know what to do. Number three, Capella will not take part in the dance if he reaches the theater early. Now, putting unless in the middle simply means you begin with the result and you end with the condition. Remember, there is no negative in the if, I mean, in the mind clause. And there is no negative in the if clause. You already know what to do. And then do the same to number four. And do the same to number five. Till we meet again. I send out.